I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Got a spaceman, huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. Again. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! N-W-O. The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hi everyone, you're watching the Wrestle Rock Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny D, and I am with my partner, Benoit, aka Nostradamus Ben. How are you doing, my friend, today? Oh, yeah, fine. And you? Yes, I'm going super great. It's always a pleasure for being this uh, awesome project with you. Me so, too. Uh, we start uh, our fourth seasons uh with uh the native american the punk yes uh that that's super awesome and uh today we have a special guest he is a, a ring of honor uh wrestling talent yeah he has been uh, involved in a chaotic wrestling yeah yes he has been also um involved in a segment with john cena and vince uh yeah i remember vince that. McMahon. so that will be very interesting so let me introduce yourself mr kingpin brian milunas how are you doing today my friend i'm great how are you guys doing uh, that's <clears throat> super cool yes Thank we're so doing much. super great and this is very appreciated that you accept our invitation for uh, the Wrestle Rock podcast so, season four. Yes, yeah, season four. <laughs> season four. Yes, I, I, I wrestled Tatanka, so you had a big, uh, big opening uh, episode with Tatanka. I've wrestled Tatanka. So. Yeah, cool, cool. He's a very good guy, and you know, um, he had a lot of wrestling talents. And about wrestling talents, we have Brian Milonas today. So. Go ahead with the first question. For the first friend. question. Yes, I know that you love football. So oh, yeah. uh, I think that <laughs> with Brian, I think that will be um, a good, uh, perfect fit, if you know what I mean. So oh, yeah, ahead, I, I know, I do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we know that you are a huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan. How long have you been a football fan? Oh, I mean, yeah, since I was a kid. Um, I, I live in New England, so you figure, hey, I'm going to be a Patriots fan, but not not the case. Uh, my my dad was a real big Steelers fan, okay. um, so uh, you know, um, I just sort of went with him. Um, but I was like a little kid; that was always our thing: big football Sundays, uh, you know, chili on the stove, wings, that sort of thing. Um, that was always, you know, my thing with my dad. Did you play a little bit, or during your high school, or? I did, yeah, yeah. So funny, my mom, my mom wouldn't let me play before high school. Okay. And then my dad, uh, my dad, uh, you know, he okayed me playing in high school. Uh, under, you know, my mom, my mom sort of threatened him though. You know, if anything happened to me, uh, he was going to be in for it. So uh, yeah, I played, I played some high school football. I was not very good, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, I was. Uh, you know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In baseball, big, big body. Yeah, I was a yeah. I played ba baseball. Was actually my first love. Okay. Um, I played baseball throughout high school. I even played a little basketball. Believe it or not. Okay. Oh, are you a Red Sox and a Celtics fan? I'm a Red Sox fan, but I'm not oh, a yeah, Celtics fan. Yeah, oh. I'm. I'm a Lakers fan. Believe it or not. Ah, nice. Really nice. Uh, we know that you uh, have been trained by uh, the different killer Kowalski. So, how does it feel when you uh, when you know that uh, Triple H, uh, China, Perry Saturn, Coffee Kingston, Matt Bloom, and, uh, and many other wrestling talents? How does it feel uh, to have been trained by Mister Kowalski himself? Yeah, to have uh, to have just been able to spend time with Walter. Uh, was amazing, you know. I, you know, uh, obvi I mean, obviously, by the time I came along, Walter had slowed down quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. But just to have that opportunity, um, you know, every week to to sit with him, to talk with him, to ask him questions, uh, to travel on the road with him, uh, made a trip oh. up to Quebec City with him. Um, mm -hmm. Had to have been like 2004, 2005, somewhere, somewhere mm -hmm. in there. Um, but yeah, just a, just an honor and a privilege. Um, 
you know, Walter Killer Kowalski is a guy. I think I think that era that era of guys is almost like being forgotten a little bit. And Walter's a guy who I think in any era of pro wrestling would have been a top guy, would have been a main event star. I feel like he was almost ahead of his time a little bit um, with the way he was. But just, uh, yeah, I feel very lucky and fortunate to have to have even gotten to, to know him as well as I have and and uh, travel with him and learn from him. Yes, and he is uh, one of the greatest of all time. So that's super uh, cool that you can uh, learn a lot of things with um, Mr. Kowalski. So, um, and you started, uh, if my memory is good, you started your wrestling career in uh, 2001. And um, for what federation exactly? Because uh, I know that you have been involved in the chaotic wrestling, but mm -hmm. imagine that you wrestle with a lot of wrestling promotion, you know? Yeah, yeah, over the years. I mean, yeah, definitely. I probably wrestled for a lot that are no longer even around um, in this area. But Chaotic Wrestling was the one I really started with. That was my home. Um, you know, um, Walter Kowalski had come over to the Chaotic Training Center, the Chaotic School. Okay. Um, so that's really, yeah, Chaotic Wrestling is where I uh, where I got my start and where I spent, you know, the really up until the time I went to Ring of Honor. Um, you know, it was always affiliated with Chaotic Wrestling. And then once I had left for Ring of Honor, um, you know, that, that sort of, um, you know, I don't really work there anymore. I don't really do anything with chaotic wrestling anymore, but, um, yeah, that's definitely where I got my start. Okay. 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 Uh, are you still in touch with certain members of the chaotic wrestling staff, such as, uh, John Cena senior? Um, I mean, John, John Cena senior, I mean, I, I run into him every once in a while. He does shows around here. Um, I ran into him recently. I brought my so my son. Uh, my son loves loves wrestling, so I recently brought him to uh, to a show at the the Boston Garden, and we ran into uh, we ran into John Senior Senior. He's uh, he's a great guy, and you know uh, he's he's a big reason why I got one of the coolest moments of my career. So uh, I love John Cena Senior. He's a great guy, and uh, always always a tr uh, treat when I get to get to connect with him. And in 2007, uh, one of your f uh, famous matches involved uh, Vince McMahon himself yeah. and John Cena. So can you explain uh, to us this uh, experience? That's yeah, it was it was wild. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. John Cena Sr. definitely obviously had a, uh, a big hand in, in making that all happen. But uh, uh, we didn't even know Vince was there, right? So the only people that really knew Vince was going to be involved in the match was John Cena himself, John Cena's dad, John Cena Sr., and then the owner of Chaotic Wrestling at the time, a guy named Jamie Jamikowski. They were like the only ones that knew Vince was there. Um so, uh, you know, uh, working out with, you know, John Cena kind of put the match together for us during the day um, and very meticulously had laid out what he wanted to happen. And uh, it made sense, you know, but here I am, I'm down on the mat and I'm getting up and uh, the corner of my eye, I can see somebody get in the ring. Now, I don't know if it's a fan or something. I don't know what the heck is going on. And then I realize it's Vince McMahon in the ring. So just a wild experience to not think you're going to do anything you know I, I wasn't expecting vince mcmahon to be there that day and then all of a sudden i'm in the ring with him and he's raising my hand you know wild experience <laughs> nice okay uh, uh how uh, how did you get recruited by uh, ring of honor yeah so it um i kind of started a few years before i even um, really got there. So I had wrestled Delirious, uh, like in Vermont. Okay, okay. Um, and we had a really good match, which led to a couple of, um, couple of opportunities with them. I had a dark match. Okay. Um, didn't really go anywhere. And then, um, I was having a conversation with another, another chaotic alumni, another Kowalski, you know, alumni, uh, Ivar, the Viking Raiders. Um, he had told me that, uh, Kevin Kelly of all people kind of asked if I was still wrestling, what I was doing. And that kind of got my wheels turning. Um, so I decided, um, you know, decided in 2016 to do a uh, Ring of Honor tryout camp. Um, okay. So I, I'd, I'd gone, I went there, uh, two-day tryout camp. It was a really uh, wonderful opportunity. They ran a great camp and just was able to impress, you know, the right people, be it, you know, Kevin, you know, Delirious, mm -hmm. uh, Chris Daniels was there, you know, Mark and Jay Briscoe were there. Um, 
and from there i just kind of you know i got a couple opportunities to be in uh, dark matches was in the top prospect tournament in 2017 uh, and then right at the end of 2017, going to 2018 was when the opportunity for the bouncers came up. So it was it was a few year process, but um, really amazing experience. And during your process with uh, the Ring of Honor, we know that uh, in 2019, uh, you team up with the Beer City Bruiser against uh, the Briscoe Brothers mm -hmm. uh, for the tag team title. So do you think this match is probably one? of your the most important match of your career or yeah yeah i mean the, the one in particular was in was in lowell massachusetts where we challenged for the tag titles and um you know obviously in the last year um yeah it was it's, it's a match that's always been a lot to meant a lot to me it's 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 right up there amongst my favorite matches of all time okay. um but obviously added meaning um you know with us losing jay uh this yeah. year but Um, yeah, I mean, those guys are just unbelievable. Um, just both of them are, are, are two of the absolute uh, best professional wrestlers that I've ever seen, that I've ever had the privilege, privilege of sharing a, a ring with. As a tag team, they are just on, on another level. Um, you know, they are, um, without a doubt to me, one of, the, one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Whether or not they got to WWE or not, I don't think that's even – moderately relevant to um, them being listed among the greatest teams of all time, just for every, believability work, um, you know, and then to have that match with them, um, you know, because, you know, me and Bruiser are tight with tight with the Briscoes anyway. So then to go out there um, being, you know, Lowell, Massachusetts, which th that was the home of chaotic wrestling. So um, that's where I really cut my teeth was the city of Lowell, Massachusetts. Some of you know, I've probably still today, have wrestled more matches in Lowell, Massachusetts than I've wrestled, you know, anywhere um, just because of how often we were, were there for chaotic wrestling. Uh, so to be there in front of my friends, my family, you know, uh, just an amazing experience. Uh, one I'll never forget. And definitely, um, definitely one of the most important moments of my career. One of the most important matches of my career and one of my favorite matches of my career. Awesome. Cool okay. Awesome. You have been part of the ROH Tag Team Tournament in 2019, uh, and you wrestle against uh, PCO and Brody King. Can you share us the, this experience, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were, that was uh, um, wrestled against them a couple times. So we did tag wars, I think, with them, and then and, uh, and then we did another match in Milwaukee. Uh, I loved it because they they are both just real physical wrestlers, right? And I I love that. I love the physicality. I love the You know, what's the, you know, it's the funny thing people say, you know, like big meaty men slapping meat or whatever, you know, like it's, uh, I love that. But I mean, Brody King obviously showing the world um, what he can do right now in AEW, uh, phenomenal talent and, and PCO, I love PCO. Um, you know, he helped me break in. I, I've done a lot of Canadian bookings recently. He helped me break in uh, with that market, but just to share a locker room with him, there's a guy, you know, I grew up watching, Uh, and then to share the locker room and share the ring with him and Ring of Honor w was awesome. I love I love PCO. I love I loved bugging him with, with my dumb my dumb uh, fan questions too about his time in the business because he you know he's uh, it's it's crazy that he's still going. You know he you know, yeah. he's a guy who I mean he was in WWE and like the early '90s and he's still yeah. going today and he's still you know with a national company and doing amazing work. So I I love PCO. Yeah, and he is a fantastic guy, and, and as you said, we remember in the in the mid '90s he wrestled against the greatest. Uh, he wrestled against Sean, Brett, Diesel. and Diesel, and now he is always involved in the professional wrestling. He's and, 55. Uh, he pushed yeah. his body, and that's a big asset because that is not. Uh, for everyone so but that's super cool that uh, PCO can share with um, the um, the main roster but also with the rookie wrestler so that's super cool that he is always involved in the many uh, wrestling promotion in the independent uh, circuit you know um, I mean? so, yeah, just yeah he's, he's, he's a guy's always willing to help too like you know anytime I had questions or Uh, ideas or, or like I said, you know, trying to, you know, after Ring of Honor ended, uh, trying to get back out there, right? A lot of us had to go try to reestablish ourselves on the independence yeah. um, after having not really been there for a little bit. And to, to have him be able to, 
you know, um, introduce me to people, speak on my behalf. Like, you know, I can't say enough good things about PCO. He's a, he's a, just a tremendous guy. Yes, a really good gentleman. Maybe, maybe you didn't know that, but uh, PCO was our first guest. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Open <laughs> for review, but the uh, first guest. Yes. Yeah. Um, right have you been approached by uh, the, the past or the, in the present by the WWE, AEW, or Impact Re Wrestling for our wrestling tryout, my friend? Or so I mean, um, I mean, a long time ago, I did I did do a, a few WWE tryouts. Okay. Did a lot of extra work for WWE mm -hmm. from from 2003 to like 2011. I did a lot of extra work for them. Okay. Um, no, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I've ever been a, a approached or offered anything um, by them. I've I've had opportunities. I've had conversations. You know, when John Laurinaitis was there, this is probably even going back like 2010, 2011 conversations with him. Yeah. Uh, but it just never it never materialized. You know and I think now at this point in my my career and my with my age and everything, you know, I'm 41 now. I don't think I'm a guy who WWE would be all that interested in from an in-ring perspective. Um, you know, I think they're trying to get younger. They're trying to go with a youth movement. Uh, AEW, I was fortunate enough to um, you know to get to to get booked on. Didn't get used, um, but um, you know I've definitely reached out to them. Uh, nothing is materialized. Uh, yet so impact i've never really you know i've never really talked to them i've never really had conversations with them um but uh certainly a place you know i wouldn't say no to i would love to love to envision myself um so really you know my focus has uh over the last especially this year uh has really been establishing myself back on the indies and and you know i think because i think right now it's um right there's a lot of wrestlers out there there's a lot of people trying to bang down the doors of these major companies but i think part of um getting there is you you do have to establish yourself on the independence a little bit you do have to you know i have that name from ring of honor um but i'm not looking to rest on my laurels either you know i want to go out there and prove uh you know that i can hang with all these young guys still you know the the the, the crop of talent out there now on the independence is is really something okay mm -hmm. are there any opponents you've never faced but would like to Oh man, um, yeah, Ro Roman Reigns. How about that? <laughs> um, no, I mean, boy, out there on the Indies, you know, I think there's, uh, you know, I think there's a ton of, uh, I think there's a ton of people, right? I mean, I, I mean, there's all the top names, right? I mean, I think, I think anybody who's asked that question doesn't say a guy like a Roman Reigns or Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, you know, and. and um, AEW, you know, how, how would you not want to wrestle MJF or, or, or John Moxley or guys like that, or Will Ospreay? Um, you know, I think, I think, I think I'd have a pretty similar list to everybody who thinks they can, uh, who'd want to go out and wrestle the absolute best in the world. And that's, and that's really what I'm, you know, uh, in my mind, it, it's, I think it's wanting to wrestle, uh, the absolute best that are, that are out there. You know, I, I can tell you from my time in Ring of Honor, like a couple guys that I, um, I didn't get a chance to connect with on on one on one matches. Were uh, were Jay Lethal? I mean, he'd be high up there. Roosh was another one, be high up there. Bandito, uh, Dragon Lee, those are guys you know that I've been around that I would have loved to have had had matchups with. Nice. And uh, <laughs> it's twenty minutes, maybe. So as usual. Uh, my partner, Benoit, a.k.a. Nostradamus Ben, it's all about the French prophet. Uh, as usual, he tried to predict the future of our guests for ending. So go ahead, my friend. Okay, first of all, Mr. Melonas, thank you so much for the interview. No problem, my pleasure. Okay, <laughs> I, I predict to you, uh, did, did you wrestle in Japan? I have not, no, not yet. Okay, I predict uh, to you that uh, you will wrestle in Japan as a monster heel with a gimmick like uh, Vader. <laughs> All right, I like it. I like it. Sign me up for it. I'll do whatever I can to make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So uh, it it's uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, we are very grateful, honestly, that you can take uh, 20 minutes already with us. This is super appreciated. Thank you so much for your time. And have a great day, my friend. Right on. Take care. My pleasure. Have a good one.